Hey, what's going on, guys? Wait a minute. Alexa, time to film. Okay. That's more like it. Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Mikey, and today I'm going to talk about how I studied for the MCAT. I'm going to split up this video into four stages. I'm going to talk about how long I studied for, what resources I used, and when I started taking practice tests. If you stick around to the end, I'm going to show you exactly what score I got. You'll probably see it up here, but it'll be a bit blurry. How long it took me to get that score, and how I was able to improve. But before we get started, we need to have some coffee. Welcome to Starbucks. How can I get a for you? Uh, can I get a venti cold brew with light ice, please? Ah, uh, nothing like that first sip of coffee. Now that we got that out of the way, let's move on to stage one. So it took me about three months and a bit to study for my MCAT. I started studying in the beginning of April and I ended up doing my exam on July 23rd. I would recommend giving yourself about three to six months if you do have obligations or one to three months if you don't have any obligations at all. Um, and I did have some obligations. I had some volunteering that I couldn't really leave. Um, you know, I was really invested in it and I also was doing research at the time. So it was a bit tough to manage my time. However, when you do start studying for the MCAT, you'll realize it's not a part-time thing where you could do a couple hours here and there. You really have to devote a lot of your time to the MCAT, you have to be ready to understand that, you know, you're going to put your life on hold if you have other obligations. Now, in the first month of studying, basically what I did was I went through the Kaplan books and I used Kaplan mainly because I read online that they weren't as detailed as the Princeton review books or as exam crackers. There isn't really a need or a point to study that extra information in your head. I wouldn't even recommend using the psychology and cards book. I went through all the resources, Kaplan, Princeton, exam crackers. There's only two big resources that I used for psychology. The first is Khan Academy. So Khan Academy actually made plenty of videos for the whole MCAT and they did it in partnership with AAMC. AAMC is the company that actually makes the MCAT. So you might find in other Khan Academy videos if you're searching for chemistry or biology, you might learn too much information or too little. However, if you watch all the Khan Academy psychology videos, you'll know that whatever's in the video you need to know. So there isn't too much information or too little information. Another thing I used was this large psychology PDF textbook that I found on Reddit. Um, I'm going to link it down below. There's also a summary of that PDF. So I think the large one is around 330 pages or so. And the summary of it, it's around 80 pages. So basically what I did in the beginning of my studying was I skimmed through around 20 pages a day and I would do those corresponding questions in an Anki deck. So what I used throughout my whole studying was Anki from day one up until exam day. I used a pre-made deck by someone named Mile Down that I found on Reddit. I'm going to link everything I discussed in the video down below. So I know that this deck had around 2,800 cards. So I spaced that evenly where I would do 100 new cards a day. I would do around 50 or 60 that I already knew. So by already knew, I mean the classes that I already took. So before taking my MCAT, I took organic chemistry one, to microbiology, cell biology, basically everything you need to know for the MCAT aside from psychology. Oh, and I also didn't take human physiology, so I had to learn all that from scratch. I also wouldn't recommend making your own cards in the beginning of studying because that does take a lot of time. I'd recommend making your own cards later on through practice tests and through questions that you end up getting wrong. That psychology PDF, the huge one, is essentially what's helped so many people score really, really well, like 520 plus. However, if you don't understand the concept, I would recommend going back to the videos because it does very good because it does give a very good explanation on how <coughs> because it does give a very good explanation of the topics. In addition, in the beginning of this phase, I started doing cars practice on a daily basis. So cars, you need to get used to the stamina. You need to get used to sitting in a chair, doing nine passages nonstop. The resources I used for cars was the Exam Crackers 101 Passages book. I'm going to link it down below if any of you guys want to go purchase it. Um, another resource I used was Jack Weston, which is really good. This is a free resource where they release daily MCAT passages. Um, I've heard mixed reviews on it. A lot of people like it. A lot of people don't. It's, it's based on what you like. You really have to just get the gist of it and try different types of companies and see what works best for you. So now we're going to talk about stage two. So stage two lasted from about early to mid-May up until early to mid-June. And this is when I started using UWorld a lot, a lot. And I would do roughly 50 to 100 questions a day. I would fill in all the gaps that I didn't know before. So if you don't know what UWorld is, UWorld is essentially this online uh, question bank that has so many, so many questions about different topics on the MCAT, like chemistry, psych, social, biology, everything. And they have amazing, amazing diagrams on it. This is the one resource, aside from the AMC content that I'm going to discuss later, that I would recommend that you buy. Um, UWorld did help me a lot. I think 
think you world single-handedly was the reason why I was able to do really well on my science sections so essentially what I would do during this phase is I'd wake up do my Anki cards which would take me about an hour to an hour and a half then I would do course practice like I said before you always have to do course practice every single day and I would do a range from five to nine questions and I would time them and then once I'm done cars I would move into your world and that's when I would do 50 or 100 questions non-stop and I wouldn't recommend that you time yourself in your world because you're mainly using it as a learning device so once I would finish your world I would review them whatever I don't know I would put into Anki and this is when I started making my own own Anki flashcard. By the end of my studying, I ended up making around 3,000 Anki flashcards. And don't get me wrong, right when you start reviewing in the beginning, it's going to take you a bit of time to go through everything. But as you do more and more practice, the holes and the gaps are going to be filled and it's going to take you a much less time to review. During this phase also is when I started doing practice tests. And um, the company I used for doing practice tests was Altius. I was reading online trying to figure out which one was better, Altius uh, or Blueprint. And then I ended up just choosing Altius just because they had really, really good deal. Usually throughout the year, they'll have have different discounts like I remember I got um, 10 tests I think for a hundred dollars and they're usually three hundred dollars and like I said before I'm gonna make a future video on all the resources I used and I started doing one test every single week so my MCAT exam I booked it for a 6 30 a.m. slot because I did it during COVID so I would wake up essentially once a week and I remember I did it on Thursdays at 5 a.m. shower brush my teeth get ready just as if I'm going to my actual exam and I would do with a full exam full seven hours and a half exam now during COVID we did have a shortened exam but I wanted to get you to that stamina early so that once I did do the full exam I just wanted to blow by it since if I got used to the seven hours and a half one when I did the shortened one it would have been a breeze and I think it's key to build the stamina early on because the MK is not like any normal exam no exam is seven hours and a half non-stop with only 10 minute breaks and a half an hour break in the middle in my case during COVID we didn't even have that half an hour break in the middle we only had a 10 minute break so throughout the MCAT studying in general I actually wanted to wake up every single day at 7 and that's what I started doing just because if I had the MCAT at 6 30 a.m. I needed to get used to waking up early and be able to think on my feet at early hours of the day. And that's it for stage two. Now we're going to talk about stage three. So for me personally, stage three lasted from, I'd say, early June up until the week before my MCAT. So up until July 16th in this case. And what I did during that phase was I only did AAMC material. And the reason why I did this is because I wanted to get used to their questions. A lot of people make the mistake that they start using AAMC material last minute or they use it too early and then they end up having nothing to do after or they switch back to a different company after. Now, just like I said before, whenever I would do practice questions, I would always spend time after to review them. I would give myself a couple hours, whatever it may be. As I said before, the more you do practice problems, the less it's going to take you to review. I would always make sure that I would add them to Anki. So I was doing quite a considerable amount of Anki cards a day, but the more you see them, the better, because you don't really end up forgetting information if you just keep staying consistent and doing and doing and doing and doing Anki. Another thing that a lot of people did other than making flashcards was they would make a Google sheet and that's totally fine. You got to do what's best for you. Not one method is perfect for all. Like I remember when I was studying for my exam as well, I created a study plan. So I'll put it right here. If you guys do want that study plan and see how exactly I made it make sure to comment down below and I'll make a future video on it now the AMC stuff is not cheap it costs around $300 but this is the one thing aside from your world that I would say is necessary for you to do well in this exam if you were to buy one thing it's definitely gonna be the AMC stuff because that is the gold standard that's the stuff that is gonna be the most similar to test day aside from your world of course your world is the best if you do have the money I would recommend 100% buying your world so now we've reached stage four and this was the week before the MCAT. What I did basically during this week, like I said before, I would just wake up in the morning, finish my Anki cards, which took me an hour to an hour and a half. Then I would always do cars every single day leading up to my MCAT. I always did cars. Maybe I would take like one day off here and there just because I would get sick of it. I would always, always, always recommend that you do cars on a daily basis because you really do need to solidify that strategy and that stamina. And then once I finished that, I would start doing any extra questions that I had flagged in UWorld and in the AMC. So there were some questions that I didn't fully comprehend. And then I would go back and double check and make sure I understood all these concepts. Um, I also did one practice test in the beginning of this week. And I remember I saved AMC full length four during this week because I read on Reddit that AMC full length four was very similar to some of the MCATs that took place last year just to let you know amc has five full length mcats amc full length one to four and then also has a sample test i think my order of doing the test was one two uh sample test three four i ended up doing worse in cars on test day and that's fine can't really control that 
I just did my best and that's what's really important. And that's what you guys really need to know that the MCAT is a marathon. And if you don't end up doing as well as you expected, that's okay. Just know that the MCAT is hard. And if you don't do well on your first time, that's okay. And that's basically all I did for stage five. Anki, cars, another practice exam in the beginning of the week. And I would just go over questions that I was unsure of because there's nothing else you could really do to do better on the exam. So just keep that in mind. You know, you worked your hardest and now it comes to test day. Try your best. And that's really all that matters at the end of the day. Now, looking back at it, I did do some things wrong, especially in the car section in that I was focusing more on quantity rather than quality. Right when I started studying for my exam, I was trying to finish a lot of questions, a lot of questions, but I wouldn't try to change my method. I wouldn't try to change my strategy. Another regret that I had is I wish I'd started U World earlier and I did end up finishing all of them, but I was so caring from time and I didn't end up getting to review every single one of the questions I got to see. I'm gonna have links for everything down below, including my Kaplan books that I use, U World, uh, the AMC bundle that you could buy and any other information that I found online. So I'm sure you've all been waiting to see what I got on my MCAT. So I'm gonna post that right up here. So you'll be able to see that my scores are pretty even all around, except in cars. I didn't do as well as I'd hoped in cars, um, but I am going to release a video for all three science sections and I'm going to explain exactly how I was able to get that score and what methods I used to get it. I might release a video about cars. I'm not exactly sure yet just because I didn't do as well as other people that might be able to give you better advice on it. I know there's a bunch of YouTube videos out right now about high car scores and they really helped me out. They helped me improve my score a bit. And if you guys do want to see a video about cars, maybe about all the resources that I used, please feel free to put a comment down below. So thank you guys so much for watching my video. I do really appreciate it. If you did enjoy it, please subscribe down below and turn on post notifications because I have new videos coming out every single week. Next week, I'm going to discuss MCAT resources and exactly what I use and which ones I found to be the most effective. If you do have any MCAT related content that you want to see, please comment down, down below and also like the video. I'm not sure if I said that earlier, but if I didn't, then I guess like the video now. And yeah, I guess other than that, thanks for watching. Cheers. Alexa, time to film. Alexa, time to film. Okay. That's what I like to see. That's what I like to see.